In this question I want to find the area between these two curves, or, or this curve and this straight line if you like, so y equals 3x minus x squared and y equals minus 3x. And first thing to note, they do, just meet, they do meet here at this point 6 minus 18, we're not going to check that in an exam question you might have to work out where they intersect or something to carry on with this problem, but we're going to take that as given they intersect here. Now, um, the previous examples might lead you to believe this is going to be quite complicated because uh, this area goes you know, partly above and partly below the axis and then it's not going to be that easy for us to, to to work out because that's quite a lot of work to do here so you know one way to go about this was, would be to say okay well look, I've got this area, I've got this bit of the area here so if I did the integral between 0 and 3 of 3x minus x squared dx that would give us this bit here I could then work out this triangle, that's just a triangle, so I could work out its dimensions and work that out. And then I've got to work out this bit here, which of course I've got to work out separately because this is below the axis, so, uh, oh, but that's even that's not that straightforward because if I integrate, uh, if I do this integral here between 3 and 6, that gives me this bit of area here, uh, which will be negative, so I make that positive, but then I actually want this bit here, so I work out the area of the trapezium and then subtract that area. And all seems a bit, um, all seems a bit messy. Um, fortunately, here when we've got an area between two curves, um, it's much easier. So actually, what I can do is I can just do the integral of the higher curve, like physically the one that's above, and I can subtract the lower one, which is here minus three x. And I'm just going to integrate that between the x coordinates of the points where they intersect. So I'm just going to integrate that between 0 and 6. And I'll explain why this works in a second. But this is obviously much, much simpler than working at all the bits separately and trying to trying to sort that out. So I've got the area between two curves that are enclosed just in one single piece between two points where they meet up. Then I do the top one minus the bottom one with the, for those functions and integrate that. So here I get uh, 3x minus minus 3x, so that's 6x minus x squared. We integrate that between 0 and 6. Doing the integration here we get a 3x squared minus x cubed over 3 between 0 and 6. When I plug 6 in here I get 3 times 6 squared, so that's 3 times 36 minus 6 cubed over 3, so that's minus 200 and 16 over 3, which is 108 minus 72, which is 36 units squared. And that is the final answer there. That's the area enclosed between these two curves. So having done all that worrying about positive and negative areas, which we really do have to do when it's just one function and there's an area above and below the axis, um, you know, why did this turn out so easily? Well, if you think about what we're doing here, if I'm integrating between you know this minus this, what does this function end up being? Six x minus six uh, x minus x squared. What's the top function minus the bottom function? So if for any particular value of x, it just tells me how far above the straight line the curve is here. Okay, so for a particular value of x, what I plot here is this distance. You know, um, so uh, here again for this particular value of x it's it's whatever that distance is and the function we end up with 6x minus x squared well uh, that's going to go through uh, 0 uh, and 6 because they the distance between them is 0 and um, again this is a this is a parabola it's got the, the maximum values at 3 now this this uh, diagram isn't perfectly uh, accurate you see I've made this 3 is width here is much bigger than this one so this doesn't look exactly as it would but essentially the function we're integrating looks like this. Right? It's the top one is always above the bottom one so the area uh, of the actual integral that we're doing here, this will also you know, obviously works out the area here. Um, so this thing we're working out is always above the x-axis so the actual integral we're doing between 0 and 6 here is always uh, positive and this area will be the same as this area because for every particular every point here we've got the height there it's got the corresponding height here so uh, it may appear to be slightly reshaped but essentially 
we've kind of just dragged this line around to make it the axis and then reshaped and then this region sort of is just uh, you know, shaping uh, itself there above it but it's going to have the same area. A little bit of a hand wavy proof there but I hope that um, you know justifies it to to some extent uh, why that works. One thing we'd have to watch out for is if the function we'd end up with here wouldn't you know be totally above the axis. So when I said this works just because it's one single piece well if these are my two functions I've got one like this and one like this and I did you know, uh, let's call this one, this top one f of x and this bottom one g of x and I tried to look at the integral of f of x minus g of x dx as we just did there well in this bit would be fine because you know f of x is above g of x so in this region here up to, up to the point where we get to here uh, it's going to be above the axis but when I go past this point where they meet well suddenly f is below g now so that's going to be below the axis so if I just try and do so this is what the function roughly you know, f of x minus g of x will look like it should all be you know, y equals um, so this one would have an area partly above and partly below and that wouldn't apply uh, so we don't have to worry about this you know very often um, uh, in the you know say in a, probably in, in the A level exam you're doing but um, it could come up and you know, and in general, as you go further, you see something you've got to watch out for. You know, we should be thinking about what we're doing. Um, but that rule about just taking the top function minus the bottom function is always okay as long as I'm just looking at one segment here. So if I wanted to work this out, all I'd have to do is do this bit as one, and I would do for this one, I would do f of x minus g of x. And then when I'd look at, you know, between this limit here and this value of x here, whatever they are, and then to do this bit, I would just instead do g of x minus f of x between those two limits because um, uh, and that will just give me a positive answer here because for this bit g is above f and then we'd add them together so just like here where we'd work this bit out and this bit out make this bit positive and add them together so there we go hope I haven't confused that too much uh, you know the first example is the main thing to take away that you can do this integration this is a really a helpful technique to save us some work uh, in that situation where we've just got an area between two curves.